Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It's June. I don't know how that happened so quickly, but it did, which means we are doing another birth month flower and June's birth month flower is the rose. So let's jump right in. Okay, so we are gonna start by drawing our rose with a pencil. Um, and we're just gonna sketch out some shapes to start. So I'm just using um, Arches hot press paper, um, but you can use any smooth paper that you have. We're just drawing the rose, so we don't need a textured watercolor paper for this. And I'm gonna do another one back here, I think. Okay, so we just have our circle shapes like this. And now we are gonna go to the center um, at the top, and we're just gonna start by drawing kind of like a squiggly circular <laughs> line. I'm gonna be honest, I've tried drawing roses a few times and it just hasn't been working out the way I want to. So we're just gonna keep it as simple as we can today. Okay, and you're just gonna start making little petals that overlap. Try not to think too much about it. We're not making it super realistic. Roses are harder. I'm just gonna bring it down here. We'll have another petal up this way. And we're just drawing like circular curved shapes like that, okay? Like that, and then we can have, you know, a petal falling here. Maybe one back here. Okay, just play around. until you find a shape that you like, okay? So maybe this one will be a bit more tightly wound. So start by doing your little squiggly circular and you're just gonna make it larger and larger. And if you don't like something, erase it, try again. Just going around and you're just creating layers like that, okay? And have some that are kind of coming down or falling down so it's not like just like a ball shape. Like that, okay? And then we will go over that in ink, um, but first we're just gonna do the stem. So we're gonna have some of those parts that hold the base of the flower together, I forget what they're called, coming out. <laughs> Just squiggly, kind of almost like little leaf shapes. And then we can have the stem of the rose. Just make it kind of rough and uneven. There's even like little like bumps where the thorns were too. And then you can have another little stem that this one would be attached to. And let's draw some leaves. Okay, so we're gonna have a little stem coming off here and then you're just gonna do a big leaf shape, okay? And their leaves are actually more, um, they have kind of like these like zigzaggy patterns on the edge, which I'm gonna do with the ink. Um, I don't feel like I need to do them with the pencil right now, but just keep that in mind when we do do it with ink. And then I'm gonna have one coming forward like this. Maybe it's behind that one. And then let's do another little one over here. And you can, this can be behind and we'll just erase that pencil mark after, like that. Okay, maybe we'll have one up here. Smart, smaller, not smarter, smaller. <laughs> and maybe we'll have another one back here and it can bend. So we'll start like this and then have it curve like that. No. That's not where that line would go. <laughs> well done. So we'll have it curved down and then we'll bring the line like this. There we go. You know what? We're not going to have a curved petal. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> okay. We'll go like that. Okay. So now that we kind of have the gist of our outline, um, I'm going to take my pen So 
So for my ink part, for the ink portion, I'm gonna be using my Tombow Mono Drawing Pen in a size 03, and then I'm gonna use size 01 for shading, but you can use whatever pen you have. And now you can just go around all the parts that you wanna keep. So we're not gonna be going around that initial circle part, we're just gonna be going around the individual petals. So try and be a little, not shaky with your, your movement, but sometimes the edges of the petals, like the tips of the petals, are a bit more, they're not as smooth in the lines, you know, they're a bit rougher and... Okay, we're coming forward. Have this big one here. Like that. Have this one that comes down in front. Like that. The little greenery parts that come out. You can do the stem. Don't forget those little bumps in the stem. And then this leaf is going behind that petal, so I'm just gonna go behind, like that. Oh, I forgot that the, the, <laughs> the leaves have those little ridges, so I'm just gonna go over it, it's fine. Okay, just doing like a little zigzag. They're very minimal, like they're not crazy noticeable. But there's a little bit of a zigzag pattern to the edges of the leaves for roses. Like that. You can do the line in the middle. I'm just gonna make it a little bit. So we're gonna go down very lightly and then do another little line kind of down and we can do the same thing for the veins in the, the leaves. Just use light pressure so it's not as dark. Like that. Okay, and then we will do this other one. We have the outline of our rose. Now we want to erase all of those pencil marks behind. Okay, so now that we have our outline, we can take our smaller pen, or you can just use light pressure with your regular pen, and we're gonna start doing a little bit of line shading. And the line shading, um, we're not gonna do too, too much, but you're just gonna do simple little lines at the base of some of these petals, okay? And remember, they got a curve with the lines of the petals. Curve with the shape of the petals. So like here where two petals meet, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna darken up that line a bit and then I'm just gonna do a little bit of shading there. And then the base of this petal Okay, behind this petal here. I'm not going to go too into detail. I think there's too many petals to really, I think it could, I could overdo it if I did that. So I'm just going to try and keep it as simple as I can. I found roses actually one of the harder flowers to do. And then these petals that have fallen. Uh, 
Um, there's just so many petals and it's almost like such a perfect flower. You don't want to mess it up, but I've just like released the pressure from how I was feeling about doing a rose and we're just going to try and make it as easy and as simple as we can here. So don't be too hard on yourself if it doesn't look exactly the way you want it. That's what I'm trying to tell myself. Just darkening up some of the lines there. I'm going to darken up the part that holds all the petals together under here. Just by doing some lines. Like that. And so you see these petals here, I have the lines going out because those petals are kind of curved over. And then from here, you're seeing the bottom of these petals. So that's why I'm shading there. So I'm just gonna darken up where the stem meets under here, just a bit. And then I'm just gonna do, almost like I'm coloring it in, but not. Just doing some lines just to make it look rough and have texture. Darkening up any parts that are connected to other little stems. Okay. And then for the leaves, I think I'm going to actually leave the leaves. I might just darken up around. I think I'm gonna grab my bigger pen again, the size 03, and just, you know, maybe I can darken up one side of the vein, like that. Darken up where another leaf may kind of overlap do a little bit of line shading like that, but I don't want to overwhelm this piece with line shading. Because unless you're really good at it, which I'm not, <laughs> um, it can look a little bit unnatural and just like a bit too much. Okay, so we're just darkening up some of the veins and then around the leaf and like right here this petal is kind of casting a bit of a shadow so I'm just going to do a little bit of line shading underneath this petal and I think that's pretty good so I think we're going to leave it at that and that is how you draw a rose Okay, so now that we've drawn our rose, we are going to paint a rose. And I'm gonna be honest, painting roses are not my favorite thing, especially trying to make them more realistic like this. Um, I tend to paint looser roses, but I'm gonna show you both ways of how to do this. So first I'm going to go through my materials. I have Arches watercolor paper, my Winsor Newton professional watercolors on my palette, and my Princeton snap brushes. I have a size 12 and a size six with me. And I also have my pencil and my eraser, water and paper towel. Okay, so quickly I'm gonna show you how to paint um, the more realistic style of rose. So I'm just gonna sketch it out first. Okay, so we have our sketch. 
and now we can start painting. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick one petal at a time. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've seen, this is also in one of my newer um, watercolor booklets. If you haven't checked it out, it's in my Etsy shop in the link below um, where I do more realistic detailed looking florals. So this is in there. Um, but you're going to work on one petal at a time. So start with a light wash. Okay, so I'm just using, I think that was alizarin red with mixed with a little bit of pink. So you start with your light wash and then you're just going to go back in to the base and add some of that darkness. Okay, and that's going to give some depth and shadow. And you want to work on one petal at a time because you don't want them touching and bleeding into each other. You want each petal to have that gradient of dark to light on its own. You don't want it to blend into something else. So work on one petal at a time. I'll work on this one next. And if you are going to work on one that is next to it, you have to make sure the first one is dry. So I'm just using my size six brush for this. And if you do see like a bit of a harsher line, like dark than light, you can always just take a clean brush and dry it off and just blend it out a bit more. Okay. So you can drop in your color. Okay. And just slowly blend it out. I like to just dab it on my paper towel to blend it out. Okay. And you can even drop in a bit more darkness towards the bottom like so. Okay. And then the center is going to actually be pretty dark because that's where the most shade would be. But again, just working on one little section at a time. Like that. Oops. Work on that light wash first. And so you want to think like if it, if you need a reference photo, I definitely highly suggest it um, just to see where to place the shadows. So these petals down here, the shadow would be hitting underneath because say the sunlight is coming from the top, um, there would be a shadow underneath here. But these petals where the base of the petals are tucked in light or tightly in the center, the shadow would be down here. And these are the tips of the petals. So just think the tips of the petals are the lightest part and then the base of the petals are gonna be the darkest part. But because you don't see the base of these petals, you're just going to see a shadow going into where they are tucked down below. So that's where you're putting the shadow. I hope this all makes sense. Okay. So just keep going around to petals that are not touching each other. Um, uh, we'll do this one. Leave a little bit of white space. Okay, and if you don't want those pencil marks, it's not too noticeable, um, but you can always use a watercolor pencil crayon or colored pencil, whatever you guys call them, um, to do that, the outline, so you don't see that pencil mark. It will just blend in. Okay, okay, so while I'm waiting for those ones to dry, let's work on the leaves. So I'm just going to take some green here. I think I have some sap green. Actually, I want to make a darker green, so I'm just going to use my poker's green and my dioxazine purple okay to make a nice dark green and again we're going to start with that lighter wash try and make those edges jagged I just keep dipping my paintbrush in water instead of more paint just just get that light wash Okay, then I'm going to go back in with more paint, make it a bit darker and hit that stem. And I'm actually going to go around the outside, the outline of it. So the inside is lighter and the outside is darker. And then I might grab the tip of my brush and just do one line like that down the center. Okay. And we'll do a bit more detail on it. Once it's dry, we can actually do the greenery part of the flower here. Okay, I'm going to leave this leaf right now because it's touching that one and I want to separate them. So just keep that in mind if they're touching. 
do my stem. You can do this leaf, same thing. Nice light wash. that and then you're going to wait for everything to dry until you can work on the next thing that's not touching one of the wet things does that make sense <laughs> okay now that they're all dry you can work on the next petals so again light wash i'm going to start speeding this up because you're just doing the same thing over and over again um, but you guys can take a look at how i do that Okay, so once you're done all the petals, if you notice that some maybe have faded, what you can do um, is take a little bit more paint, go right in with that dark paint at the base of the petal, wash and dry off your brush, and then just blend it out. Okay, so you're doing kind of the same thing, except you're just not wetting the whole petal initially. You're just blending it out. Just keep washing and drying off your brush and blending it out till there's like just clean water there. And you can always tap in a bit more color at the base if you want. And this is just to make it a bit brighter if it's faded a little, okay? So you can do that on any of the petals that you need to. Um, and then once they're all dry, you can take a light wash of your color and just do with the tip of your brush, very, very light pressure, do some little crease lines coming from the top and bottom going with the shape of the petal, okay? So make sure it's always going with the curve of the petal, okay? And that will just add a little bit of extra texture. You know, I might add that darker shadow on this one again too. Kind of faded it a bit. Wash and dry off your brush, blend it out. Okay? And just grab that really light wash and just do some of those curved lines just to give it a little bit of texture. Just like that okay and then we can just do a little bit more on the leaves let me just fill in this back one now because this one behind is underneath a petal and behind another leaf 
we are going to make it a bit darker because there would be a shadow casted on it. So I just go in with my light wash to start again. Then you're just going to grab some darker pigment, make it darker right around that other leaf and right under that petal, especially. Okay. You can do that line like that. And then the ones that are already dried, if you want to sharpen them up and the stem too, you can just do some little shading lines, give it a little bit of texture, and then you can do the veins, with really, really light pressure and the tip of your brush like so. like that. And then when that one dries, you can do the same thing. Okay. But that's basically it. That's for the more realistic looking one, the more detailed one. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how I do my really loose florals, which I actually prefer. Um, so I'm going to do some peach colored ones. So I'm just going to grab my size 12 brush and I'm going to start off with a light wash. And I'm gonna use the tip of my brush to do some circular squigglies. Yes. Okay, going around some C curves, leaving a little bit of white space. You don't want a ton, okay? And then you're gonna start pressing down and making those little squiggly lines a little bit uh, thicker. So you're gonna press down, lift up, press down, lift up. Okay, and I like to think of threes when I do it. So one, two, three. And then I usually put another curve over where two of those meet. And you can have parts of it touching, but leaving a little bit of white space. You don't wanna leave a ton of white space, but you wanna leave a little bit. Two. Okay, and you're just doing these curved shapes around with your light wash. Okay, now there's a lot of white space there, so I might just come in and just fill it up just a little. And I'm just trying to make it a little bit more loose. And I go a little bit lighter as I get to the outside too, okay? So I'll just dip it in my water with whatever pigment I have left on my brush, just making it lighter. And then I like to go in with more pigment. So I'm just gonna grab a bit more peach in this red. And I go in and I tap while it's still wet. Okay, make sure those areas are still wet. I'll tap in a bit more color to make it a bit more vibrant, especially to the middle. And that acts as a shadow. Grab a bit more red. Okay. Like that. I'm going to wash off my brush. I'm just going to another one here and that's how I like to do my roses and then I would grab some green and I would have the leaves bleeding into the outer petals of that rose and that's how I do a loose rose I really enjoy that look more so than the more realistic looking ones even I just don't think I'm the greatest at those so this is what I prefer to do okay You know what, we can do another rose too. Before we do that, I'm just gonna grab a bit more of the darker green. And I'm just gonna tap a little bit of that darker green into the stems. Okay, let's do one more rose. Okay, so circular little tiny curves, really rough with the tip of your brush and a little bit of pressure, okay? And then a little bit more pressure as you go around. Think of the three initial petals, one, two, three. And then make it bigger, leaving a little bit of white space. And I'm just gonna add more water to my brush to make it lighter as I go out for the bigger petals. Just 
really loose. Okay, and then I go back in that darker pigment and just tap around the center like so, okay? And there you go, there are your loose style roses. So pick whatever style you like best and enjoy painting it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day guys, bye.